Well, welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports. And here with what's becoming a familiar face, not only on the show, but then the off-season shows, and that's Joe Bassett, the promoter of Lee USA Speedway. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and reigning promoters of the year. You know, the track. I mean, we all know Red and Judy McDonald own that track. But yeah. they've surrounded themselves with some pretty good people. Well, it was, it was funny when you were doing the description of the track and everything they had gone through, Bill and I standing there talking to them. We went through the same stuff we went through last year. <laughs> so you had no idea? Was, no clue. No, no, no and, clue. And no, what a, what a great job you guys have done. And, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, the stuff that you go up against, like any other racetrack, everybody's dealing with it. Oh, yeah. The one thing that you have that nobody else has is that town and Friday nights and, you know, and you have to jump through hoops to keep everybody happy. But Red, Judy, they keep doing it. And they keep trying to expand and keep their product going, and yeah. you know, and, and I think it's a great little facility over there. It, it's Red. I, I always joke it's Red's golf course. He's not a golfer, but he loves racing, and, and that's that's his pride and joy. Yeah, no, it is, and you know, and one of the facilities that you know, I, I call one of the marquee facilities throughout New England. You know, you know, nice paved pit area. You know, the the grandstands, nice visibility everywhere. Everything's everything's right there for you. You know. Yeah, we, um, matter of fact, we just had the bleacher inspection this week and um, fire inspections next week and everything's getting cleaned up. The maintenance crew is, crew is doing an awesome job. They're raking and painting and everything will be pristine for the ACT race. Yeah, and, you know, coming up, you know, the 26th was supposed to be the 12th, but let's face it, you know, Mother Nature <clears throat> hit us all is the Governor's Cup 150 and, the, you know, notoriously kicks off the ACT season, yeah. but not this year, and, but still a pretty big deal. You know, oh, yeah. The governor, I see the governor, just mm -hmm. signed on to come back. Um, she, she had already committed to do the 12th, and then she, this, this week she committed that she'll be there for the 26th. Waving the green flag. Yeah, we're hoping she does it again. She yeah, did it no, last time she was there. Yeah, no, and it's, and, and it's a big deal, and it's, and it's a, it's a fun-filled event. It, you know, notoriously, like I said, kicked off the ACT season, but... Uh, still, it doesn't take away from the prestige of these guys that want to come in and win this race. Yeah. Wayne Helliwell Jr. hasn't won that race yet, and every year he's, he's hoping this is the year. You know, and um, you know, last year Eddie won it, and then you know, after the success that the, I call it the, the Lee Three between Joey Pole, Helliwell, and, and Eddie. Let's see when they come back and what kind of show they put on this year. Yeah, no, and it was a it was a great race last year, right from the heat races all the way up through the the feature event. And and what I like about the day is you don't know what you're going to get for weather in April, so you guys don't jam pack all this stuff in there. So make it an eight ten hour day. You got three classes: the classic lights, yep. the mini stock tour, and then obviously Tom Curley's ACT tour. Yep. So you get plenty of racing in without spending all day there. Well, just the ACT race between the heat races and the concies, that's a show within itself. Yeah. And um, I'm glad to have the, the classic lights, you know, that they put on a decent show. And the Northeast Mini Stock Tour back, they had been away for a year or two. And, you know, they always put on a great show, and they have good car counts. Yeah, no, they do. And uh, so this kicks off your season. You've got a big season uh, planned. We'll talk about that in the next segment. But, you know, this ACT event, you know, how long has this Governor's Cup been going? Do you know? I mean, I, I remember, and I don't know if they used to call it the Governor's Cup, but I remember back in the 80s and 90s, ACT kicked off in April over there at Lee USA Speedway. I, I, as far as I know, it, it's been the Governor's Cup since the 80s. It had a few years that it wasn't the Governor's Cup, um, and then Bob Watson brought it back a bunch of years ago now, mid-2000s, mid and um, this is where we're at again. Yep. So any big changes that people are going to walk into um, at the track on Sunday, or is it just all pretty much the norm? Um, for the ACT race, it's going to be pretty much the norm. Um, there'll be a few more changes for the bowling bash, and expect the, the changes to come opening, opening night. Opening night, and I know you guys have worked on a lot of things, and, um, you know, to try to increase the car counts, um, you know, bringing in some more tours, and, you know, but... It just starts during the off season. So, you know, you finished up with Oktoberfest, yep. 2014. Not a successful weekend. Lots of cars, lots of fun. But then you don't get a chance to take a break. You did the two off season car shows, you know, Lilac Mall. So you're, you guys are constantly out there promoting your product and your racetrack. Well, 
I, I pretty much figured the Wednesday after Oktoberfest was the start of the 2015 season. We were wrapping up the, the rules changes or anything we were doing there. Wrapping up, um, we have a new head of tech coming in and getting all that finalized so we could you know, have rules out, everything done before the first of the year. So then what's brought you into Augusta show? Yeah, the you Augusta know, show. Portland show, you know, brings you a little interest in from the main the main crowd, and the, the, like we, as I call the snow shows, because it doesn't never fails. I bring one to Augusta, I have to clean it because it snows, and then I bring one back from Portland, I have to clean it because it snows. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> and a lot of talk at those events from the, the guys in central and northern Maine about Oktoberfest, you know. So oh, always, you know, they haven't even started racing yet this year, and they're already talking about the end of the year going to Oktoberfest. Absolutely, you know? which was a great time last year. You know, great racing, and uh, you know. Saw some champions wrap up their their championship battles and yep. uh, brought in some tours and you know when we come back in our next segment that's what I want to talk to Joe about is I don't know if there's a track in New England that's got all the high power tours coming in that you do. It's it's a busy season. Busy season, but uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back here with Joe Bassett. <laughs> Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems, even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with nine locations in Maine. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by... Bentley Saloon, Route 1 in Arundel. Stop by and see why me and my friends say, who has more fun than us? We do! LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Southern Maine Motors. Out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership. Route 1 Saco. Well, before we went to break, Joe, we talked about all the tours that you guys are bringing in. Starting with Sunday's ACT, yep. Governor's Cup 150. Then you get a month off, and then the Tri Track Series. You know, the yep. little thing started, what, last year? Really was the first year of, you know, doing the three race series, am I correct? Yep, now, last year, the, when the racing guys approached us to do the, the Bullring Bash the first time and wanted to do it on Mother's Day, we were, we were reluctant. And it was a decent crowd. I think Mother's Day heard it, and um, they changed the date this year. It'll be on May 17th. and. Um, They've already got 50 plus pre-registered cars. Yeah, no, and it, you know, the nice part about this is that you know you're bringing some of the stars from MRS, some of the independent modified guys, the wheeling modified guys, you know, guys that just chase money. So you're bringing the best of the best, you know, and and you guys fortunate enough to kick it off. You and, know? and Jim Schaefer, the, the racing guys promoter has said if we get 3,000 people front and back gate coming in, he's going to put another $5,000 to the purse and make it a $10,000 to win race. So mark your calendars, May, May 17th. You, you, know? you could be the, the reason why it's a $10,000 race. Now, is that a Sunday, May 17th? It's it is, a right? So another, another practice day on the 16th and then the bullring a lot of tracks on the 17th. Are, a lot of tracks aren't running, so it's a chance for, you know, if your track ran Saturday, go down there and support Sunday and, and try to pump that purse up, you know, and then... You know, a month after that, you know, the Valente Modified Series comes in. And, yep. you know, that's a, you know, we all know and seen the growth of that Modified Series and some of the drivers that compete at that level. And this year it's twin 50s paying off on the aggregate. Um, there's been all, always the, the talk of Lee and the tires can't last 100 laps and this and that. So to make a better race, they're going to do twin 50s. Really? Yep. Well, that's not a bad thing to do because obviously... There was a lot of controversy surrounding last year's race, you know. I, my still YouTube hits it. on my show <laughs> went through the roof because of it. So I appreciate it. But, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, nobody needs that. It's going to be a better race for the fans. Yeah, oh, yeah. And ultimately that's what it's all about yep. is the fans. And then a week later, 
the Pro All Star Series. Tom yeah. Mayberry and his gang come back into town and bring in their super late models. They haven't been on that track for a few years, and I think they it's always, five. always, always put on good racing. Yeah. And I think the last race they had there, uh, Gary Smith, you know, one of the low dollar independent guys, um, won his only pass race ever. You know, so you know that's a track where those guys can shine. Well, it's, it's definitely a track where every real complaint is no bite. So you get a guy that you know might be of smaller motor or you know not as good of equipment, just has the handle right, he can do well. Yeah, no, exactly. So, you know, that's you know you've brought three big tours in before the end of June. You know, then brings us into July. You do a big, huge fireworks display, just like any other track. Yep. And um, but you know you guys you guys do it up, and then you know the NEMA show. You know they come in July seventeenth and. You know, anybody that's seen these cars on any track, they're just, you're on the edge of your seat. Yeah. But, you know, at Lee, you know, with the wall all the way around, I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, they're, they're fast. You're just and sitting they, and waiting, you yeah. know. Then Mike Pox, his Granite yep. State Pro Grand Stock States, Series. Granite States will be back for their second run at Lee. You had a great crowd there last year, right? Last year, was it was a, a very big crowd. I mean, as far as the attendance goes, it was our third biggest show of the year last year. Really? And yeah. that's... July 24th, which is, you know, used to be that Oxford 250 time, yep. but it isn't this year, so, you know, it's a chance to go down on Friday yeah. night and see the Granite State Pro Stocks and see what they bring to Lee. And, and you know, the nice part, and, you know, one of the things we, we we talk about, but I don't think people really get sometimes is you run Friday nights, so it has a tendency to hurt you, but it also, it can really help you if, if the race <coughs> fans would say, you know what? This is some place I need to go check out a half a dozen times a year. And with our new pay, pay structures and stuff, the late model sportsmen especially, I've had multiple guys come up to me. Can't run a full season, not going to run a full season as far away as are, but five, six, maybe seven times this year. Yep. And uh, we'll see how it goes. No, no, you're right. So, you know, the end of July, you got the Northeast Mini Stock Tour, which uh, they're opening up with the Governor's yep. Company Act Tour, but then they come back the end of July, you know. The, um, that's the street stock tour. Oh, that's the street stock street tour, not stock the mini tour. stock tour. The street stock so tour. This is new. Brand They're actually new there with the Bullring Bash. Yes, they right? are. As a as little a, exhibition. It's um, a non points, as they're calling it, a non points open show. Yeah. To try to get you know things sorted out and see how they're going to run. Yep. Um, kind of exciting for them because it's one of those divisions that's really never had anything for a tour. The mini stocks took off, Pass had the Sportsman, Hobby Stocks. Wildcats, that type nobody of division, really, nobody, nobody really had anything. So we'll see if they get out and support it. Then the show that is a must-see. You know, <laughs> last year was phenomenal because the two previous years, you guys have fought the weather. The year before, we did not even have Ever. a show. The we year didn't before, get a rain date. It was like misting, and yeah, last year, it was good to see Red hit a home run. But the weather cooperated. <laughs> Bentley's bike ride brought in a ton of bikes. The place was packed, and it was no. it was just a phenomenal I, night. I still want to say it's only a triple. Only I'd, a triple? I'd, I'd like more. <laughs> you want, well, you always want more, but, you know, the Isma, the Ollie Silva Memorial Classic, the Isma Super Modifieds, and what a show they put on on that track. And Just the, the, the pure horsepower, and that's one of those divisions where I tow that big block super around all summer long. The old timers, the hot rodders, they'll look at that big block in awe, and I'm like, you got to come see it. I don't know how many people last year stopped me and thanked me for saying, you know, t thanks for turning me on to this. Yep. This was an awesome race. Yeah, no, and it was. And, you know, hopefully it all cooperates again. So, you know, we just named off, like you say, ISMA, the, the Street Stock Tour, the Mini Stock Tour, the Act Tour, the Pass Tour, the Granite State Pro Stock Series, you know, the Volante Modified Series. There's not much left yeah. as far as... Pro Four is a New England Truck Tour. Well, but I'm sure they're coming, right? <laughs> they we are. We just didn't talk about them, but they I'm sure are. they're coming. So you guys are the track that's given every tour a chance to come and, and showcase their talent and their racers. Well, when we sat down in the off season, um, Bill and I had a long discussion about how do we make Lee the track that stands out, and it was brought to our attention that if you do a different tour every night or a different something coming in. When the fan goes home, it's, well, last week we went and saw trucks, and this next week we went and saw modifieds, and then we saw pro stocks, and then there was fireworks. So the, the Joe fan is going to see something different every week. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And that was, uh, you know, that's the thing that caught my eye this offseason when I started looking at schedules. I'm like, 
these guys got everybody. You know, they got everybody. So, so if you're a fan of a track up here in Maine that you, you know, you support religiously every week, there's still a, you know, a reason right here for to go down and catch some of these shows at Lee. And I know when I go down on Friday nights, I see a lot of Mainers that come down. So, you know, that's why we have you at our off-season shows, and we have you guys on our show because we want to see obviously every track succeed but you know helps bring some of those main crowd down there well it's, it's kind of funny because we're in the location for a friday night that's perfect for maine and northern new hampshire because everybody in the weekends that's wanting to go north hits all the traffic yep. so the mainers and the northern new hampshire people then come south miss all the traffic enjoy a good show and then the traffic's all gone yep and then go home no exactly and then you know you crown your champions and you know, and I've seen the pictures of what you guys do at your banquet and one of those first class nights, you know. I think some tracks still have some work to do when it comes to crowning their champions and that celebration at the end of the year. But, you know, Lee, you know, I put them up there with Beatridge and Thompson and stuff. They, they, they really, you know, Red has always been that really professional look and image, you know. Red has always wanted to, to support the people that support him. So his big thing is the banquet needs to be nice, good trophies, nice awards, all to, to appreciate the, the races at Race for us. No, and that's, that's awesome. And then, you know, the 9th through the 11th of October, and I know we're putting the cart way ahead of the horse, <laughs> but it's Oktoberfest. But really, you never stop talking about Oktoberfest. You never stop talking about, you know, planning and the preparation and all that goes along with it. There's always the question, are you going to run my division this year? Um, are you going to change this rule? Are you going to change that rule? Can I bring my camper? When can I bring my camper? It just never, it never ends with Oktoberfest. It's kind of become its own identity. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And uh, so there it is. I mean, for just the special events, there's so much to do at Lee USA Speedway this year, beginning with Sunday's Governor's Cup 150. So we take a break. We'll come back with Joe and talk about some of the weekly divisions there and the purse structure and how you're trying to use the purse to help you know, you support us, we'll give back to you. Absolutely. So we'll be right back here with Joe Bassett on Mainly Motorsports. Hi, I'm Johnny Wolf. And I'm Dan Wolf. We've been selling and servicing vehicles on Route 25 in Gorham since 1972. Wolf Auto Service offers state inspections, tires, brakes, and suspension. 21st Century Motors has a great selection of cars and trucks starting at $29.99. With no mortgage and low overhead, we sell and service at guaranteed lowest prices. We're just six miles west of Turnpike Exit 47 on Route 25 in Gorham. Online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the southern Maine area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Now we're back here with Joe Bassett, and let's talk about the weekly racing. You know, we just hammered the tour. I mean, <laughs> you seem like every other week you got a, a major tour coming in. But your weekly racing, you know, 350 Supers. Yep. It's been your class for a few years. Um, you got the late models. Late model sportsmen. Late model sportsmen, which don't look like the act late models. No. Well, so a few of them do. A few but of them, but they, you don't run on the same tires, I don't no, believe. And, no. you know, the rules are different. You got the hobby stocks, which are similar to Wildcats and street stocks yep. and Strictly's from tracks up here in Maine. The Ironman divisions, which are six cylinders. The V6 front wheel drive. And then the four cylinder pure stock, which is something you're trying to implement. And yep. Hopefully it takes off. But, you know, the thing that I really like is with all these classes, everybody wants more money. Everybody, you don't pay enough. You don't do this. You don't do that. Well, you guys have come up with numbers that, you know, if this is what shows up for cars, this is what we pay you. Yeah. But you bring us the cars, this is what we pay you. So, you know, you're dangling the carrot out in front of the horse. It's just whether all those horses want to come get it. There's been, especially the late model sportsmen, there's been a ton of, of interest in that division. Um, for over 20 cars, it's $700 to win. And the average sportsman driver or limited driver will tell me that's a late model purse. Yeah, it is, but yep. you bring the cars, we'll pay you. Yep. Um, even our super class, if they have 14 cars or more, we'll pay them 1000 to win. On their regular shows, it's 800 Yeah. 14 cars isn't a lot of cars to ask for. It really isn't when you think about it. Um, 
the Supers is one of those unique breeds. 14 is a good, a good car count, really. Yeah, but they're out um, there, right? They're out there. I mean, if you had all of them that are out there with crate motors, we could have 16, 18 of them. Yeah. Um, right now, we're on 12 to 14 that say they're coming weekly. Yeah. But you know how it goes. It, money runs out. You oh, know, yeah. They'll park them, but, you know, you keep your fingers crossed. Everybody has a good year, and nobody breaks, and they keep coming. The hobby stocks, that's a, you know, I know we got a couple guys from Maine, I think reigning two-time champion, Patrick Tangway, you know, uh, supports you guys and, yep. you know, goes down there. And he says he's going to run the tour this year, but I think once uh, he starts running and gets good in points, he's going to want to go for the three-peat. Yeah, no, nothing <laughs> wrong with that. And then the Ironman, you know, every track has those support divisions that are affordable for people to get in and try their hand at racing. And that's yep. where your six-cylinder Ironman comes in and your four-cylinder pro st uh, pure stocks. Pure stocks, yeah. The, um, the, the Ironman cars, actually right now, if they all show up that they say we're getting, we could have 14 to 16 of those. Um, the four cylinders last year, we only had a handful that showed up, um, only a couple that on a weekly basis. But this year, there's, there's some more interest in it. We'll, hopefully, they, they'll take off. If not, we'll do something different for 2016. Yeah, you've got to keep trying, you know. But, uh, no, I'll tell you, my hat's off to everything and, you know, what Red and Judy and, you know, yourself, Bill Callen, obviously Scott Tapley, you know, Mr. Spence on the microphone, Pete yep. Falcone, I mean, and the entire staff, you know, the people at the gate, the, you know, concessions, you know, the safety workers, you know, your, you know, you use Speedway Safety for, you know, the yep. ambulance. So, I mean, it's a first-class facility. And if you haven't had the chance to get down to Lee and check out what they are doing on a weekly basis, well, go down and check out what they're doing when they bring these tours in. And, uh, you know, your website, Lee USA Speedway, what is it, LeeUSAspeedway.com, Lee yep. you know, you got all the information you need right there on how to get there and times and prices and, you know. Yep. And that, this season you're going to want to watch the Facebook page because there'll be some specials coming over that that won't be offered anywhere else. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that I like is, you know, we talked about and we're going to, you know, go back to giving tickets away on Mainly Motorsports and you guys were the first ones to jump on board, you know. Yep. Judy sees the value in you know, having tickets given away, and you know, and I'm not going to give them to somebody that goes to Lee every week. I want to give it to somebody that goes to Beechridge on Saturday nights and yep. says, you know what, I'm going to go on Friday night. I'll I'll go. You know, so no, absolutely. So I want to thank you, Joe, for taking the time coming up. I know the next time anybody sees you at a show will probably be Bentley's All Era Car Show because you're right there. I'll you're be there before the All Era Car Show. I'll be there for the opening car show May 3rd. Oh, geez, Joe. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking the races when they come, but yeah. No, I'm gonna. You know? I, I try to make a bunch of the regular shows at Bentley's, and I've already talked to some of the small block guys, and we're gonna show up with some race cars and support Bentley because he supports us. All right, no, that's good. But I appreciate you taking the time and coming up and promoting Lee USA Speedway, what they got going on. Don't forget the Governor's Cup coming up. You know, Sunday. I mean, great way to see the at cars if you've never seen those, and you know, the Governor of New Hampshire, and you know, it's a pretty prestigious event. It and, is. Uh, you know, and we'll be there bringing you highlights for uh, next week's show. So for Joe and Steve, we're going to take a break and we'll be back. And I'm going to talk some monster truck action when I get back. There you go. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check of money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Windham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself, just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Legendary race car driver Bentley Warren is putting a rundle on the map. When Bentley's saloon opened in 2004, it was just a little bar room on the side of the road. Today we have a giant saloon with live music, dancing, and great food and drink indoors and out. We're always looking to meet new friends and have a good old time. There's always something exciting going on at Bentley's. That's why we like to say, Who has more fun than us? We do! Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations. Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. 
Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Join us for our 25th anniversary year. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. And, you know, usually we get the circle track guys in here and they're talking about their next race or what they're going to do. Uh, they don't want to wreck their cars. But now we've caught up with a guy that he hopes to go this weekend and wreck some cars. And that's Greg Winsonback, the driver of Cross Station. And I uh, want to welcome you to Mainly Motorsports, Greg. Hey, thanks for having me on. So, crushing cars, destruction. That's really what we think of when we think of monster trucks. And how accurate am I? <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> you might, so you must have been that destructive kid in the neighborhood when you were little, and you've just carried it on to your adulthood. I don't think my, my mom would say that I haven't changed any, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, we, we would soup it up first as much as we could, and then we'd end up destroying it. So, yeah, that's how it come about where, I'm, where I am where I am now is um, souping stuff up, and then instead of destructing, destructing our own cars, we're wrecking stuff that's on the middle of the floor. So. Yeah. Now you're located in Jefferson, Maine. You have this yes, monster have. truck cross station, and uh, you know I know a lot of people throughout the state as well as New England have seen this big red, orangey colored lobster, um, and it's so unique, and it really plays into your Maine heritage. Yeah, it does. You know, I was lucky enough to spend some time on a boat and learn what that was like, and uh, you know, I thought. When I built this thing, you know, I've always been into monster trucks. Always wanted to be a, a monster truck driver and owner and stuff. When I built it, why, why not? Instead of just being a Ford, Chevy, or a Dodge, or whatever, why not build something that's unique to Maine? You know, I love the state I live in, and I wanted to do something that people would notice and know where it was from, and, and just, it was really a no-brainer, you know, a giant lobster. No, and I know it's, a, it's very attractive at any event you go to, whether you're on the West Coast, up in Canada, or all the way down South. You know, it's, uh, people relate it to Maine. So it's, it's really a good, uh, a good thing for the state of Maine as you are putting them on the map, so to speak, in that monster truck crowd uh, community with Monster Jam. Yeah, you know, that's what they, they pick up on it. And, you know, and at first, you, you go to these shows and you're thinking, well... You know, they look at it, and they kind of look at it a little funny, and they keep walking. But by the end of the show, you know, usually the little kids already know who you are, and they watch you on YouTube and stuff. And uh, But I've seen a lot of parents at the end of the show when we do our post autographs tell me how much they like that truck and how the idea came about, how it all fits into what we do. Yeah, no, it's a great concept. And which brings me to this weekend. You're performing on the home court, you know, up there yeah. in Bangor. And, you know, those have got to be the ones that really mean the most because, you know, family, friends, uh, business associates, those type of people can come and watch you do what you do. That's where it all started, Steve. You know, I mean, this is home. I love performing here. The crowd in Bangor has been behind me every year. I've been up there. I mean, we did our first show in Maine uh, up in Caribou at Spud Speedway. So um, to have all my friends, family... Uh, people that I just see in the store or over at the, you know, the shopping malls or whatever, they all get to come and, and watch it, and uh, it's a great time. I mean, I have a lot of fun. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, is when I do get on the mic, all the state, you know, all the main state fans, they can understand me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Now, how long have you been at this? I mean, and what makes somebody want to do this? I've been at it for a long time. I think out of high school, a friend of mine out of Michigan, Jess Berge, which is pretty well known in the state of Maine too, when he had played for keeps, I started with him and helping. And I just, when I, mean, I went to my first show ever with my uncle in Portland way back in the day, and I was hooked right there to see that giant truck come over and run over these cars. And, and uh, so I got hooked then. I was able to tour with Jesse some and, I mean, I just started building one, you know, and uh, I think the selling point when it was all finished was the, the giant lobster theme of it, but that's how you get into it. You either start with somebody and you start building, or, or you can buy them, or uh, hopefully you can land a job with, like, you know, Feld Entertainment, Monster Jam, and you can drive one of their trucks, but uh, I enjoy building it. I mean, we, we work on them every day in the shop, 
and I enjoy going out there and seeing what I can do with it when, when the time's right. Yeah, no, exactly. And which brings us to this upcoming weekend over there in Bangor. Monster Jam's coming to town. Yourself, Gravedigger, you know, they got, you know, what, six, seven trucks? Uh, eight, tr- eight, eight, eight trucks. Eight trucks on display. Uh, not only yeah. on display, creating some havoc and destruction. And, you know, uh, it's it's going to be a great time. You got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You got like four shows uh, for the opportunity to see them at. And, yeah, it's just, it's one of those crazy things that I don't care how old you are, you really enjoy yourself. Yeah, I, I would say that too. You know, the, like I said, I've seen the kids start. They're all excited at the party. They can barely, you know, contain themselves in line. They're getting all the driver's signatures and they're seeing the trucks and getting their pictures and they're jumping around. And the parents, yeah, they're into it, but, you know, they're not really excited yet. And then uh, the pit party's over and done with it. We got like an hour and a half each day on Saturday afternoon. We have an hour and a half long pit party. We can do it again on Sunday afternoon before it, that show. And uh, then if you missed us in that pit party, you can get us again after the show because we sign autographs until everybody gets one. And uh, it's the after the show, the kids are kind of tired and it's been a long show and it's been loud and they've had great, you know, great time and a lot of fun. But the parents are jazzed up. They're all excited. And they're yeah. going off. So it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. You know, I'll never forget uh, my first time. Going to a monster truck show took my um, my uh, my children. Uh, one daughter, the one that actually was into motorsports, you know, decided she was hungry, and her and the wife traveled off, and they went to uh, get something to eat. But my my youngest daughter, you know, stayed there, and obviously you're not able to get in the trucks, but because of the TV show and the promotion we did, I got kind of the behind the scenes tour, and uh, my daughter. Climbed, got to climb up in Gravedigger and have her picture taken. And, you know, at the time, she was probably first or second grade. You go to school on Monday. You know, teacher goes around the room. What did you do this weekend? You know, so every kid's given their, me and this, we did this. And she said, well, me and my dad and my co, you know, his co-host and mom and everything, we went to a monster truck show, and I got to sit in a monster truck. So the class is like, oh, ooh, ah. And one little boy speaks up and says, yeah, but I bet it wasn't Gravedigger. And she goes, well, actually, it was. And she pulled the picture out that we had taken of her. And she called me when she got home from school. And I'll never forget her. She's saying, Dad, I was the cool kid in school today on the playground. Even the kids in the fifth grade were coming up and wanting to see my picture, you know. And they had heard about it. So, yeah, it is a big deal for these kids to be around these monster trucks and to watch them and hear them and then, and then get to meet the driver. Because you're the hero there that day. You and the other seven drivers, to everybody in that crowd, you're the hero. Yeah, and it's a great time. It really is. You know, those kids' spaces is, is makes it all worthwhile, no matter how much damage gets done to these trucks. Yeah, no, exactly. And uh, you know, you can go to monsterjam.com for information about this upcoming event. You can you know check out the Cross Arena uh, website uh, up in Bangor to get your tickets, your times, learn about the pit party. And, uh, you know, it's it's a great time. And if you've never seen a monster truck show, it, it's one of those things you, you have to you have to take in. You've seen them on TV, the Monster Jam World Finals out in Las Vegas. Promise my daughter we will go to those sometime. And uh, that's just huge. Which brings me to my last question, Greg. You know, talk about the difference from an inside arena event, like what's going to happen this weekend, to, let's say, the event that can happen over in Gillette Stadium on June 20th, that people could travel down there and see the trucks outdoors on a bigger, larger space. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mostly just the space. Um, I know Bangor, everybody says it's going to be small, but, you know, uh, Monster Jam has figured out how to put the jumps in such a place that we can obtain the most air, the best wheelies, you know, um, and all that in that building. And now when you go to Gillette, that's, I mean, it's huge, you know, so there is a lot more speed. Um, there's going to be a lot more jumps, of course, because it is bigger, but you know, uh, for for Bangor and for Maine, this is your only chance to get a Monster Jam event is to come out to Bangor yep. at, this, at the Cross Insurance Center and watch us. And you know, and if you are able to make the trip to Gillette, that's that's our biggest event in all of New England. So if you're at a you're at a win win. Go to both. Yeah. Now, will you be competing at the Gillette one? I don't know yet. I haven't found out. Um, you never know. You know, they they're still figuring out first quarter and what we've done and what we're going to do for the upcoming summer and then hopefully we get the call and we can go down there and I'd love to compete on a big track like that with those guys you and know and you'd be a crowd favorite you know what I mean 
New England yeah. boy, you know. I mean, New, I'm New England's only Monster Jam Monster Truck now. Um, there is no other trucks that run for Monster Jam out of New England except for Crust Station. So, I mean, I'd love to be down there to represent all of New England and Maine. So, and we, you know, we want to do something like that. And we've had some good shows in this state. And we have some good runs in Bangor, both when we did it at Speedway 95 for the Monster Jam Group and at last year at the Cross Center when we were on just concrete. This year we got dirt, so it's it's going to go crazy. Yeah, no, and it's exciting. And I know there's there's a lot of people looking forward to this weekend going over to the Cross Insurance Arena to see Monster Jam and more specifically, Greg Winsonback and Crustacean. So, Greg, I want to thank you for taking the time with us here on Mainly Motorsports and uh Looking forward to uh, maybe catching up with you before the Gillette Stadium event because I'm hoping you're uh, you're actually going to be involved. <laughs> Me too, you guys. Uh, no, you're more than welcome to stop by the shop anytime. Um, where the doors are open, lights are on. We're in here working. Anybody's willing to come in, take a look at the trucks and stuff, and uh, let's hope we get into that Gillette deal. I'm I'm hoping so because that would give me a chance to really air this thing out, let her eat. And, and show those guys and show the rest of New England what we're made of. No, exactly. So, once again, thank you, Greg, for taking the time with us here on Mainly Motorsports, and good luck this weekend over in Bangor. All right, man. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features, such as anti-lock brakes, seatbelt restraints, and airbag systems, even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with nine locations in Maine. got the car you've been looking for at OT Motor Sales. Shop online at otmotorsales.com. Not sure what brand tire to buy? Town Fair Tire has them all. Michelin, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, Toyo, Yokohama, Hankook, and more. No matter what size or brand, Town Fair Tire beats all the competition, even online prices. We'll also do a free front wheel alignment with any tire purchase. Name brand tires. The lowest prices. Free alignment? Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices. Town Fair Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. This past Saturday, I know the weather wasn't supposed to be the greatest, so that's why the Pass Act uh, combination race at Oxford was pushed off to Sunday, but Wiscasset still had their plans, and they still planned to open up their track on April 18th, and uh, woke up in the morning, all sunny blue skies, and uh, Wiscasset went for it, and we traveled up, and what a great time. And you know, the thing that I notice when you go to Wiscasset, a lot of familiar, friendly faces. That's that's all I can say about them. You know, the staff, everybody. Um, we had Ken on the show last week and we reiterated about it more than once and how everybody up there just makes you feel so welcome. And uh, we really had a great time. Parking lot was packed. The crowd was there. The car count, maybe not where it's gonna be, but you know, it's still early. A month ago, I don't think anybody thought we were gonna be racing in mid-April. You know, let's face it, there was still snow. There was still snow on the road on the sides of the roads when we traveled up there, but we had a great time, saw some great racing action, and uh, you know, the Pro Stocks were their highlight division, and uh, you know, Jeff Burgess won the race, but I really want to give a shout out to James Osmond, you know, uh, you know, he's new to the class, and did a great job, he won the heat, led a big portion of the feature, and if it just wasn't for that one bobble, uh, where he got loose and had to chase the car up the track, getting into turn one, leaving the hole for uh, Jeff Burgess, you know, he would have found himself standing in victory lane. And uh, the pressure that, you know, when he was leading the race, that was applied by Jeff Burgess and Andy Saunders, uh, just phenomenal, you know. So, you know, James Osmond, he's going to win himself a bunch of races this year. And, uh, you know, the, the pro stock division, it, it, you know, like I said, a little light, but there was some great battles going on throughout the entire race.
the Outlaw Super Series uh, was the flex division uh, at Wiscasset uh, for week one. And Derek Mingo's got that group of, uh, you know, some different looking radical race cars. Some of them, you know, look like your normal super streets, but uh, some of the guys are really taking uh, what they're allowing them to do with the rules and really taking it and stretching it. And, and it really, they're pretty unique looking race cars. And, uh, Chris Watson was the class of the field. I know he had a couple of competitors. Uh, that had some mechanical failures as they were trying to challenge him. But uh, he really, uh, I know last year when I watched him race a couple of races at the end of the year with that car number 81, uh, really, really he's got that dialed in. And he did a, did a great job. And, you know, it's going to be a fun class. They're, you know, they'll get some races at Unity, Speedway 95. Uh, I know they're a part of some other events that are going on throughout uh, Maine, you know, during the summer. So you can check them out on Facebook and... Uh, you know, I think that's a class that's going to grow too, and it's uh, it's a different type of looking race car. It's not one of those dirt late model body types that you see. So, uh, you know, congratulations to Chris Chris Watson as he picked up a win over there at Wiscasset Speedway. And in the class that got their race in just before the rain came, or 80 percent of the race, and then the rain uh, was there for the end of it, but they did a great job not spinning, bringing out the caution. They all backed it down was the Flying Four Minis, and uh, Ryan Chadwick, who's been the class of the field just about every time I've been up there, uh, you know, he had a couple battles. There was some battles going on for second and third and uh, fourth, but he pretty much had the race in hand as he walked away with the win, and, uh, you know, so they only got three classes in for the for opening day, and I imagine they'll carry the other ones on to uh, next week or the next time they're flex scheduled in two weeks. So, But a great time was had by us, and we're really excited to to go back to Wiscasset on May 16th as we have the Mainly Motorsports Fan Appreciation Night. So if you haven't started racing at your local track, pencil that in, come up, have some fun with us. We're gonna give away some things, some bikes, some prizes, some clothing, apparel. Uh, we're gonna get our sponsors involved. So just a great night up there and had a great time at Wiscasset Speedway. I did not grow up in the car business. I started as a technician in a small garage and now lucky enough to own my own dealership. I think buying a new car should be hassle-free with pricing up front. We like to negotiate with everyone the same way. Our goal is for our customers to feel good and make it easy and quick if they so desire. We pay our sales staff to help satisfy your needs, not to collect a traditional commission. Southern Maine Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Maine's only Viper dealer, Route 1 Saco. Award season event is going on now. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. 2014 was our best year ever. We have been Maine, Maine's largest travel trailer dealer, Maine's largest fifth wheel dealer, Maine's largest motorhome dealer, and Maine's number one volume dealer for all RVs. Why? Selection, prices, and a relaxed, no pressure sales process. For 2015, we've brought in even more RVs. To get complete inventory online at scotchrecreation.com. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Four Seasons Synthetic. See them for all your Amsoil product needs. Town Fair Tire, with six locations in Maine. Auburn, Augusta, Bangor, Biddeford, South Portland, and Topsom. Awards and recognition, your number one source in New England for all of your award needs.
about consistency. We waited until two races to go to score the first victory. Is this year all about winning races? Well, that's the plan every week, I think. You know, you want to win races, but, uh, you know, we had the best starting position today, so, you know, we wanted to just try to keep our position there. But, uh, man, I'm glad to be back at Oxford. I miss this place. It's, uh, Kevin, it's a good track for us. And, uh, man, Wayne came out of nowhere at the end, and I had to give it all I had there at the end to try to stay in front of him. I can't thank my crew enough, my sponsors, the cigar perpetrators here, uh, special purchase here today, so uh, really cool to get a win. All right, so we like to thank. Yeah, definitely. All our sponsors, the Coles, all the other cigar operators, Grand State Salvage. I'm going to pass through, guys. Uh, all pizza, and, uh, you know, all the fans, great crowd here today. Looking for a great time, great people, and great food? Then visit New England's number one biker destination, Bentley Saloon, owned by legendary super modified driver Bentley Warren. Bentley's is a biker bar that welcomes everyone. Staying in the area, Bentley's has their own full-service campground right on site. Tuesdays, Bentley's Cruise Night attracts car enthusiasts from all over New England. Located on Route 1 in Arundel, Bentley Saloon guarantees a great time. Check out the fun at BentleySaloon.com and see why Bentley says, who has more fun than us? Don't let the other guys rough you up. Shop online at otmotorsales.com.
enjoy getting to talk to this guy because there aren't many people that win races that are even older than I am. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You told me that you only got a college file of the other guy for a bunch of things. Alright, uh new ride this year. Uh, I guess you couldn't ask for uh, coming out of the box any stronger than you guys did as a combination for the first time. Yeah, you know, they had to work on it Friday, we wanted to be for Friday. Nobody kept saying what's the matter, so they're gonna save all the kids for Sunday. All right, uh, I mean, won your first championship here, uh, you know, well, back when I was a school kid, and uh, it's, it just never, it just never, ever, ever seems to be any less fun when you do this now. Yeah, you know, uh, I just got to thank the crew. I mean, you can't do it alone as a driver. I had an awesome crew today. DJ run, you know, run is good. He got into me once and backed out. I appreciate that. And, you know, he run me hard at the end. And, uh, it was a good race. And, like I say, a driver just doesn't do it alone. You've got to have a crew to do it. And I want to thank my crew today, and they did a great job. Another thing there, it uh, looks like, like right on the initial start there, you might have spun the tires a little bit there. Uh, get that out of the way, and things went pretty well after that. Yeah, I... Uh, up there a little bit, and just spin the tires, and I just uh, I did it the same way. I had a good car, and I just stepped back there and uh, took it easy and uh, paid off at the end. All right. Yeah, do we want to talk about anybody else before we go away? Apparently <laughs> not. How about a big round of applause, Mike Brown? wrap up this edition of Mainly Motorsports, I want to introduce you to the man that made this day possible at Oxford Plain Speedway, and that's Tom Mayberry. And Tom, what a great day of racing we saw. The legend Mike does his thing, the champion Joey Pole, the crowd was enthusiastic. you got to be pleased. Yeah, very pleased. Um, a lot of cooperation from Act and Tom Curley and his staff who's able to put this together and really excited. And all, as we all know, it's about the fans supporting it. Huge, huge pet and uh, real good fan turnout. They were really excited and into the race and very, very, very pleased. Well, it makes me be excited for not only the 2015 season up here at Oxford in the past, the ACT, but really looking forward to that Oxford 250. With the racing we saw today and some of the young guns, that, that's what I was impressed with. A couple of kids by the name of Garrett Hall and Reed Lamfer, you know, really making a name for themselves in that uh, the past 150. Yeah, I'm very impressed with those two young guys. They did a great job. There's a lot of young kids in here today. Quite a mix of veterans and kids, which is real exciting. Um, and I, I feel the same way. I'm, I, I think the race, obviously, at uh, Thunder Road will be unbelievably exciting. And then to do the doubleheader with him at Airborne and uh, kick that off. And then, you know, they've, they've agreed to take the weekend of the 250 off. And then... Cecil's worked with us up in Nova Scotia. And they're going to take the weekend off, so it's kind of like the old days. We'll get all the cars and all the fans, and I'm really excited about it. And I'm I'm real excited about the 250. Yeah, I am too, Tommy. But from all of us at Mainly Motorsports, we thank you for all your efforts you do. But for me personally, as a race fan, thank you for what you do for this sport and bringing these race cars to this racetrack and some of the events that you put on. Well, I'd like to thank you. You guys do a great job with your coverage and. Everybody working together, it seems like maybe a little excitement's coming back. Oh, it's yeah. It's good to see. Yeah, we'll see you two weeks at Beatridge, and I'm sure that'll be another barn burner. Oh, yeah, Beatridge always is. Look forward to going down there. Andy does a great job down there with that facility. We always have a great race, and uh, I think it's going to be an exciting year. All right, Tommy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good day.